What would be most useful for you in this conversation today? Yeah, so I guess I'm not so sure because I'm not, I guess like you're most lost when you don't even know what you need help with, right? Um, and I think that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. Uh, maybe I need some perspective. So I started studying in September and very foolishly thinking I'd be done by October and then I pushed it to November, took it then, didn't do as well as I hoped. Uh, and now I'm taking it again on Saturday and it seems, and it's very up and down. Like I've gotten like a couple of like 169, 170, but then like I got a really low score yesterday. And so I don't know. I think I need, like, I, I don't know what I'm, I don't know if I'm rushing, rushing too much or I, I'm just quite lost and confused at this point. I That's know, okay. I, That's okay. <laughs> That's what coaching is for because yeah. you can't always see your own blind spots, but someone who's been through the process, someone who's worked with lots of students like you can help figure out some things, figure out what's holding you back. So when you look at the exam as a whole, both the content and your pacing and your endurance, what do you feel is missing? What do you feel is lacking? What do you feel you could be doing better? Mm, I think it, so it's, it's really very, throughout the months um it seems like a problem i've had is reading too fast and like not paying enough attention uh and not like translating enough in in my head but then on the other hand lately like with the newer tests like i just did pt 79 and it destroyed me <laughs> and i don't know if it was like a really hard test or if it was me but it, there was more it seemed like i had to go back to basics uh and there was just questions that i was super confused by uh and so i think up until now i thought it was more maybe pacing and like relaxing but it seems now that I, like the questions are harder and I somehow need to learn more and be, you know. Okay, so let's say that it's true because yeah. to a certain extent, the exam has gotten harder over time. You mentioned that you felt like you might be reading too fast. So what worked for you on some of the older, easier exams may not work for you on the newer, tougher exams. When you say you might be reading too fast, is there a certain section where you think that might be happening, especially in, in LR for LR, sure. Logical reasoning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is it on the easier questions you're getting them wrong or is it the tougher questions or is it spread throughout? I think it's the harder questions for sure. Uh, so I think I struggled mostly with weekend, with weakening questions, but I've been working on them because I realized that that was a weekend, weak point for me. Uh, and then, um, flow questions as well which i feel like there weren't that many of them but pt79 had like 17 flow questions i'm i'm exaggerating but uh so I, I like i'm able to tell which specific questions i struggle with i'm not sure whether my knowledge is enough for the newer tests you know well given where you've been scoring if you've been scoring 170 and above Sometimes no, on practice that, tests. It never went above 170. <laughs> but you hit 170 though. Yes, but only like two or three times, but yes. And in, and my blind reviews are usually like 174, 177, one, like they're above 173. Well, the fact that you're able to get there means that to me, it's not about the material. It's not about the content. Okay. You're getting tougher questions wrong. Could just be because they're harder. But if you're reading too quickly on those questions, how could you change your pacing strategy to allow yourself the time for those? I mean, what I started doing is now whenever I see parallel reasoning or parallel flow, I skip them from the beginning because I know they they take very long. And then, but also what I'm trying to do is if I see a question that I'm just like, I just don't understand, I try to skip it altogether so that I have time to go back to the parallel questions, which are usually easy. They're just time consuming. Um, so I'm just trying to skip better uh, and realize that, you know, if I'm gonna get, like I just got six wrong in the section I did uh, yesterday. And so, you know, I could have gotten three if I had, if I had given myself the time. Mm -hmm.
but yeah, I don't know. I'm just a bit like, ugh. <laughs> well, that's also a normal feeling to have less than a week before the exam. Yeah. But you have developed some strategies, like skipping the parallel questions, for example. Yes. What is your pacing like? What's your speed like on those first 10 questions in the section? So bef for older tests, it was, it was very much like under a minute per question. Now with the newer tests, I do find that like there's maybe one or two questions where in the first 10 that take me longer. Uh, but usually I do try to like get to question 10 in 10 minutes. Um, or and more or less like give myself one minute per question for those uh, first ones. And how do you feel like that pacing is working for you? Um, I don't know. I never thought about it. <laughs> I, like I never realized there was other another way of doing it, and so I I never questioned my ways. Um, I do feel like I'm a bit rushed, but it doesn't feel. I just feel like some questions come really easily and the ones that don't come easily i do feel rushed but i you know i just don't know how to answer your question i guess do you know well, what i mean yeah sure i mean it's worth taking some time to think about it because there are always different ways to approach this in yeah. general though i like the idea of doing the first 10 in about 10 minutes building up a time bank that you could apply to the tougher questions later in the section. Yeah, and, and I guess I also, like timing-wise, I try to finish, like have looked at them all and answered most of them, maybe with the exception of, of three or four within, uh, like with five minutes to spare. And so then I have a few, like a minute or two to fill in the bubbles because I'm taking it in Europe and so it's still paper. Yeah. Um, and then, and like, a, and like three or so minutes to go through any question I struggled with. Um, yeah. What's your plan like for the next week? Because we can talk all day about pacing strategies. We've, you've, you've got some food for thought here, but I also want to look at just concretely, what could you be doing over the next five or so days, six or so days until the LSAT for you? It's, it's fewer because it, the exam here is on the 11th. <laughs> so oh, the 11th, okay not very many days left so today i'm taking a full test or that's where i told I, myself i would do and i need to finish reviewing a test pt79 uh which i didn't finish reviewing yesterday and then tomorrow i'll i'll take the day to review the test i do today and then i'm doing one on thursday and i review it on friday and then the exam is on saturday that's all you need to do, really. I don't think you'd have much time to do more than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like that already feels quite packed. <laughs> so, because I also have a job and you know, like other responsibilities. So, yeah. Well, I, I want to bring you back to you. Go ahead, please. No. I was just going to say I want to bring you back to the idea about thinking about your pacing strategy during these last two exams that you do. You've got one Tuesday, you've got one Thursday, and you can review the questions. But I also want you to think about what is your time allocation like over the course of an entire logical reasoning section, for example, because we do know they have that progressive order of difficulty thinking about mm -hmm. how you could use that more to your advantage. Do you have any advice uh, in that regard? Or, Well, as you said from the beginning of our conversation, ha feeling like you have to go too quickly on the tougher, reading, on the tougher logical reasoning questions towards the end. So what could you do to build up that time bank to slow down more on the tough questions that really need it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing I've been thinking about is um, just reviewing different flow types, because I really, I realized that's like a very weak part of my exam. And so I, I think maybe if I know different flow types by heart, then I will be able to like uh, identify them is more easily. That's not something I've done so far. Yeah, you've got the classic logical fallacies, but on yeah. the tougher questions, it's not really about a classic no. flaw type. It's more about just what are they failing to consider. I think yeah. it's worth taking a, a few minutes to just reacquaint yourself with the classic types. There are plenty of lists of them. I have one as well on my site, but mm -hmm. more than reviewing those, I would just encourage you to review in depth all the flaw questions that you personally 
have trouble wrong. with. Okay. Yeah, that is very, that that makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, this exam is hard. <laughs> it is. It often requires much more of us than we initially expect. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I guess do you, in before we finish, do you have? So my hope had been to apply for twenty twenty, but it seems like it's you know I'm pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. Would there be like? Do you think there's any point in taking March? for example. So there's no February test in Europe. Um, like, do you think there's any point in taking March other than like, if I'm on a wait list, uh, helping me through that or? Yeah, you could do March for a wait list boost. If your score went up a few points, that could certainly help. But otherwise I would use the March results to apply next cycle. I wouldn't apply fresh with the March results because that is too late for this cycle. Okay, and do you think now if I applied, like I'm thinking of sending in my applications next week uh, and, te and telling them I have a pending, or like next, like within the next couple of weeks and tended, telling them that I have a, a pending score, do you think that's too late or is it fine? Well, applying with the January results is totally fine, but what you don't want to do is run the risk of them waiting on your application for the March results. For March, okay. Yeah, I haven't registered for it or anything. I'm tired of giving LSAC my money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, cool, thank you. I think I just need, I think it's more like I'm too stressed in my head because it seems like there's so much um, going on this test, you know, like if I don't do it well, then I have to wait a whole year and la la la. And so I think it's more my head than my knowledge, maybe. Do you meditate at all? No, I used to. I used to be very healthy, but now I didn't study. <laughs> so I maybe should do that, yeah. Sometimes when you think you're too busy to meditate, that's when it's most important that's, to meditate. Yeah, I've been, I've been trying to like take a minute before I start studying and, and relax. And I've been exercising, but that's, yeah, I, I hear you. I think you're right. Good, yeah, just a couple of days. A couple of minutes a day can make a big difference. Yeah. Even in this final couple of days before your exam. Yes. Do you find it, do you have any advice for people like me with like a few days uh, before their test? Just don't do too much. I mean, you've got two exams that you want to do in the next few days. I certainly wouldn't do any more than that. And you also want okay. to think about why you're doing these exams. What do you want to get out of them? So don't just do them to measure your results. Do them to learn. Do them to get a high score and, and leave off on a high note. And if your Tuesday exam goes well, then maybe don't do one Thursday. You don't necessarily need to. This is not an exam to memorize things. It's not something to cram for. If Tuesday's result is great, just leave off with that. Yeah, I was thinking of that. So like, for ex like right now it's 5 p.m. and I still have a bunch of things to do. So I would do it quite late. Uh, the one I, I mean to do today. I, I'm wondering if there's any benefits in just doing one tomorrow and like, doing it like better than trying to rush through one tonight. Uh, but then I wouldn't be able to do one on Thursday or like it would seem quite rushed to do one the following day. So I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, that sounds like a reasonable course of action. Just don't try to do it late at night when you're tired. Just do it tomorrow, review it Thursday and leave off with that. Take Friday off, totally relax. Then walk in on Saturday with the attitude that you're going to just destroy it. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your time. My uh, pleasure. Uh, before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? I think uh, when you mentioned meditation, that was a really good reminder of uh, needing to relax and like have some kind of self-care uh, strategies to practice, uh, which would like will be useful in law school as well, I suppose. Uh, and so, yeah, because I, I feel like at, at one, there's times when our knowledge is enough, but like our minds aren't in the right place uh, and more studying doesn't always benefit us. So I think that that was very useful and the pacing thing as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, please keep Thank in touch you. and let me know how it goes. I will. Thanks. Have a good day, Steve. Bye. You too. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.